If you've been struggling through dealing with or recovering from an unhealthy relationship with a narcissist or other toxic personality, The Little Shaman has a catalog of over 500 YouTube videos designed to support your journey from discovery to recovery. You can also find additional resources on the Little Shaman website, including tools, courses, workshops, a support group with weekly meetings, and one-on-one appointments with the Little Shaman that are open to clients worldwide. There's even an AI chatbot built and trained exclusively by the Little Shaman using her work that can answer questions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, visit littleshaman.org. You can listen to The Little Shaman wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, The Little Shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that unfortunately most people dealing with pathologically narcissistic personalities encounter, and that would be the three Ds of narcissistic defense. Deny, defend and deflect, and detonate. Narcissistic defense mechanisms can seem complicated to dissect and to explain, but the reality is narcissists really only have one actual move, and all of the things that they do really are just different ways of doing the same one thing. They can't really counter things that are said to them that they don't like or don't want to acknowledge, and they can't really engage in a real dialogue about them in any way or about anything in any way. So the only real move they have is to avoid these things somehow and keep avoiding them at all costs. This is usually done using one of the three Ds, denying the thing, defending against the thing by deflecting it away from them somehow and often onto other people, or by detonating so that the other person leaves them alone. Denial can take a few forms. It often presents itself as a basic denial of the thing that happened, such as, that didn't happen, or I never did that. But it can also show up as denial of impact, denial of awareness, and denial of responsibility. Denial of impact usually looks like minimizing how bad something was. They're denying that the thing had as much of an impact as they are being told that it did. Denial of awareness usually looks like claims of some kind of ignorance or claiming not to realize that they were doing something wrong or hurtful. Denial of responsibility looks like some kind of blame shifting or otherwise claiming that they're not responsible for the thing that they're being held accountable for, such as because they were intoxicated. Denial can also just look like flat out refusing to acknowledge something in the hopes that it just goes away. Some narcissistic people may not really engage in an overt denial of the thing. They might not even address it in any way at all, choosing instead to utilize the next D on our list, defend and deflect. Instead of denying the thing outright, some narcissists may refuse to respond to the thing at all, even to deny it. They simply skip over the whole thing entirely and deflect the focus on to the other person. Well, you did this, or says the person who... Doing this puts the spotlight on the other person. It is, in effect, completely changing the subject. Because people are caught off guard and put onto the defensive, they might not even realize the subject has been changed until later. They're too busy trying to defend themselves or trying to correct the incorrect information that's being asserted by the narcissist. Defending by deflection can also look like making straw man arguments or putting the focus onto something that was not being said or is not the topic of the conversation. For example, if you ask them why they're not doing their share around the house, they might launch into a tirade about how you're so controlling or a pity party about how nothing's ever good enough for you. Once these arguments are over, you realize that they never addressed or even responded to anything you said at all. This is not an accident, nor is it coincidental. Even small children know that directing mom and dad's attention to something brother or sister did could potentially get them out of trouble, or at the very least, make sure they're not the only ones in trouble. This is essentially the same thing adult narcissists are doing, and it works pretty much the same way. Arguably with more success, actually, since a child trying to deflect attention away from their own wrongdoing is usually seen for what it is, and an adult doing the same thing is not for some reason, even though the behavior really is almost exactly the same. Many times, even the verbiage that some adult narcissists use in these situations is the same as or very similar to what a child will say. This is likely in part because we expect children to employ these sort of rudimentary defenses or primitive manipulations, but we generally do not expect them from adults. A lot more weight and reality is given to the things that an adult says, even when it really shouldn't be. We just seem to assume that an adult must have a real grievance or a real point or a real problem, even if they actually don't. It can be a sad education to find out that this is not true, that some people might look and sound like adults, but they really aren't adults in any way that matters. 
This can be hard to accept, but it is what it is, and expecting people to do things based on what we think they should do or how we think they should act instead of how they actually are is a recipe for disappointment and pain in the long run. In many ways, accepting this can be a relief, too. Some people really are saying things just to say them. There's no more meaning or weight that needs to be given to them than that. They're not important or true, and nothing needs to be done about them at all except to see them for what they really are and move on. Narcissists exist by creating fantasies and illusions about themselves, about other people, about the world, about life in general. You don't have to buy into any of it at all. It's very important to remember that. The third D in the three Ds of narcissistic defense is detonate. This is the one that most people fear when it comes to dealing with narcissists. The narcissistic rage that we hear so much about. Most narcissistic personalities don't immediately jump to detonating right off the bat in most situations, but if their other defensive mechanisms don't work, if they can't deny or deflect the information, many times they'll just explode. Not only does this allow narcissists to vent the numerous negative emotions about the situation and themselves that they can't manage or tolerate, it also often has the effect of shutting the other person down. Failing that, at the very least, it usually puts other people on the defensive, which feels to the narcissist like a power shift. Now they seem to feel like they have the upper hand, or now that it's a little more even. Now you're defending yourself. Now you're off balance and confused. Now they're not the only bad guy getting called out here or getting in trouble. Narcissists also know, either consciously or unconsciously, that someone getting very upset and raging or screaming or crying or becoming hysterical or going totally silent, radio silence, not answering, lends some level of authenticity or validity to their claims, their side, their behavior, whatever else. After all, why would anybody get that upset unless they really think they have a valid grievance? We see that human assumption play out in society all around us all the time. And to be fair, many times this is probably the case, even with narcissists. They probably really do think they have a valid complaint. They feel attacked and criticized and mistreated by the situation and more specifically by the person they blame for creating the situation and leveling the criticism. They very likely are legitimately angry or upset in many of these situations. The problem is that many times, regardless of how they feel, they really don't have a legitimate side or a legitimate case. They just think they do. And their behavior is therefore perceived as not just nonsensical, overblown, or occurring for no reason, but as very abusive. And it is. Regardless of whether someone legitimately feels they've been done wrong or mistreated, there is no justification for the way this kind of person often behaves or for the things that they do and say. Even if their behavior is defensive, as it often is, these are very fragile people, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter. There's no excuse for the scorched earth, take no prisoners, DEFCON 9 reaction we so often see from narcissistic personalities. With very few exceptions, there's almost no situation where that kind of response is justified, let alone the kind of things that they often detonate over. It's important to keep things in perspective and not let deflection, denial, or detonation somehow make us believe that someone has a legitimate grievance or a point because these things are not related. Certainly, some people are going to lose their cool if they're accused of things that aren't true, for example. But some people will also react the same way because they're panicking because they got found out or for some other reason that we can't fathom because we're not them. We cannot allow someone's emotional reactions to overshadow reality or to become more important than what's actually happening. And it's important to remember that these things are not evidence of anything because there's no way to really know how someone feels or why they are behaving the way that they are. In a way, the emotional outbursts that we see from many narcissistic personalities are a smokescreen. They're a misdirection to change the focus of the interaction. That doesn't mean the situation isn't dangerous, far from. What it does mean is that we shouldn't assume an emotional outburst automatically has a deeper or bigger meaning that needs to be considered or that has to somehow take precedence. Whether consciously or just as an instinctual way of being, narcissists play on the fact that most people will move over for someone else's bigger or stronger feelings. It's important to remember that emotional intensity doesn't automatically imply emotional depth or even sincerity. Big feelings or the appearance of big feelings doesn't necessarily mean deep feelings and they don't necessarily mean anything real or important is actually happening. However, even if they do, that doesn't mean you automatically have to move aside for someone else's feelings or honor their experience over your own. Your feelings and your experiences are just as important as anyone else's, and they should not be immediately betrayed or shunted to the back seat just because someone else's seems bigger or louder or more obvious. 
This is one of the ways that many narcissistic people create the illusion that theirs are the only feelings and experiences that matter, and it's one of the ways they create situations where their feelings and experiences are the only ones that are allowed to matter. Everyone is expected to simply stand aside and just focus on the narcissist. That's extremely dangerous, so it's very important to remember this. It's important to understand, too, that the reason everyone is expected to stand aside is because narcissists are not capable of seeing that other people's feelings, needs, experiences, or anything else actually matter. This is not a situation where they've weighed the value of these things against each other and they've decided that theirs are more important than yours. Yours do not enter the equation. And if you have ever tried to explain that other people's feelings or experiences matter to a narcissist, you know exactly what that means. They legitimately do not see this. And that's not an excuse for their behavior at all, nor does it mitigate their actions, but it does bring home how serious the problem really is here and why these relationships just will not work. Because this person does not understand that your feelings matter or really even that things affect you in any real way, they are capable of doing and saying some very cruel, malicious things to other people. More than capable, honestly, because they are chronically filled with rage, envy, jealousy, confusion, and generally negative feelings that they blame on the people around them because they believe any failures or bad things that happened to them were caused somehow by the people around them and because they cannot deal with these chronic negative experiences, outcomes, or feelings in any way, narcissists are not just capable of cruel and abusive behavior, they are actually prone to it. Mixing such a large and fundamental lack of empathy with these very toxic mindsets and inabilities is a recipe that produces people who have the capacity to be extremely abusive with no remorse whatsoever. After all, why would they be sorry? They believe you deserve it. You did something to them, whatever they think that was, possibly even just daring to be a person who's not completely miserable, and you will be punished for that. This is a very childish response to one's own insecurities, narratives, and lack of self-worth, but that doesn't mitigate the level of danger that is inherent to dealing with this kind of person. They don't see anything wrong with hurting other people because they can't really understand that things affect others in any real way emotionally, which is a lack of empathy, and because they can justify all of their antisocial behavior, which is a lack of shame for their actions. Empathy and shame are the things that stop human beings from doing horrible things. Empathy imposes an internal consequence on a person initially, meaning before they do a hurtful thing, and shame imposes an internal consequence after they've done a hurtful thing, which prevents them from doing it again. Fear of future shame can also work to prevent people from engaging in harmful behavior as well. If someone has no empathy, nothing is there to make hurting other people uncomfortable for them from the beginning, and if they're able to rationalize or justify their actions, they can mitigate or defeat shame regarding their actions completely. This, again, is a recipe for a person who has the capacity to be extremely abusive because there's nothing to prevent them from doing horrible things in the first place and nothing to stop them from doing horrible things again or to place limits on their horrible behavior going forward. Now, some of you might be thinking, but wait a minute, I thought narcissists were always running away from crippling shame that they can't defeat or combat or confront. They are. That's not the kind of shame we're talking about. We are talking about shame for their actions, not shame for who they are as a person. Healthy shame, in other words. If you do a bad thing, you should feel bad. The toxic shame that narcissists deal with is shame for the self, not shame for their actions. We can see the difference between these two things, for example, in situations where they've been caught or exposed somehow. They continue to defend and justify their actions, but they also might make self-shaming statements or express extreme concern with how other people now see them. We can see it in those terrible situations where they get angry and attack you for getting angry or upset with them because they did something hurtful, reckless, or inconsiderate to you. Try wrapping your mind around that. We also see it in the classic narcissistic expressions of quote-unquote remorse that many narcissists offer. Well, I'm a piece of garbage. I messed up. I did a bad thing. I've lost everything. I can't go on. I, I, I. This is not remorse. It's shame. It's completely self-centered, and if you have the acute displeasure of hearing it again, listen for that and you will hear it immediately. What they are saying says nothing about the other person or how the narcissist's actions impacted anybody but them. 
That's all they are capable of seeing, and it is absolutely all they care about. If you'd like to test that, try changing the subject to what they actually did, or turning the focus onto someone else's feelings or experience about the situation, and watch what happens. But be careful. Any suggestion that other people matter is a direct threat to pathologically narcissistic personalities, and it will be reacted to as one. Then you will be witnessing the three Ds all over again. It's not worth it. You're legitimately dealing with someone who has the emotional regulation abilities of a toddler or possibly an even younger child. They very likely do not understand anything you're saying, even if they are actually listening, and they don't care anyway. They just want you to stop saying bad things to them that they don't like or can't face, and they will do whatever they have to do in order to make that stop. That's all this is about. Regardless of how sophisticated their deployment of the mechanism might be, it always comes down to the same thing. Avoiding reality at all costs. If narcissists have to hurt other people to protect themselves from facing reality, they absolutely will. Remember that. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online, over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype worldwide. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. I teach workshops, clinics, and seminars throughout the year, so if you are interested in seeing what we're running this month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. And if you are interested in joining our support group with access to exclusive content, weekly support meetings, and more, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. May the great spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day.